Hey guys, been a little bit since my last video. I had a winter break and a few things happened, but I'm back anyhow. So, and I'm, the Jersey Herper is back with a passion. We're now gonna be releasing two videos a week and started a new series. So let's start talking about the two videos a week. So from now on, I'm gonna be trying to release a video every Wednesday and every Saturday. So this video is probably gonna be coming out on a Saturday. So you guys get a taste of what it feels like. And if you guys don't like the time or anything, please do let me know and I'll see if I can change it. But now let's get into talking about this new series. So this new series is gonna be Species Profile and I'm gonna go in depth on every hurt species in New Jersey. Lizards, snakes, turtles, frogs, toads, salamanders, everything that you need to know about all those herps. So for each herp, I'm gonna be splitting them into five facts that I find the most interesting. Their size and their appearance, their diet, their range where they're found in the state of New Jersey. I'm also gonna be saying how many I found and I might be getting into the counties I found them. I'm not gonna tell you the parks or anything like that, but the counties where I did find them. And then finally, I'll give you a few interesting facts about each of them. So that's gonna be the main idea behind this new series. But this isn't just gonna be a one year series. Actually, I'm gonna be releasing this series every single year. But now you may ask, how are you gonna do that? Well, every year there are new things to learn about each species. Every year I'm gonna be learning new things about each species. So I can say different areas where they're found is gonna be the main thing that's gonna change. So for example, right now they think that common snapper turtles are found across the entire state. But let's say I don't find them in County X. Then I'll say, well, common snapper turtles aren't commonly found in this county. So I would not advise you going there to look for them. So that's why I'm gonna be making this series every year. And every year, I'm gonna be making sure to have the year next to it. So this year, I'm gonna be doing common snapper turtle, for example, common snapping turtle 2021, because, well, we're in the year 2021 finally, and 2020 is behind us, thank God. So then next year, it'll be common snapping turtle 2022. So let's start the series off right. We're gonna start with the musk turtle because, well, I have my own baby musk turtle and you guys haven't seen a close-up video of it. So let's hop right into this video when I get home. So I know you guys were hoping for like a big turtle, but musk turtles don't get that big and he has babies that are even smaller. So this this isn't a pebble. This mm -hmm. is actually Sterling, my common musk turtle. So I actually found this guy when he was just hatching and I had him from pretty much an egg to now. And I've had him since August. So now this is a common musk turtle or Latin name Sternotheus or Dorotheus. I'm not very good at Latin, but let's start getting into our five categories about for the species profile of the common musk turtle. So let's start with category number one, size and looks. So the common musk turtle, this guy is actually only gonna get to a max size of about five inches. Most of them don't even get that big. So, and the average is between two and five inches for a common musk turtle. And they rarely even weigh a pound, or if that, they'll be close to that range. So they usually have a very long neck, which I'll show overlay of him swimming, and short legs. And then you can also see how, I don't know if this is gonna work, but you see the, you can see the dark plastron, almost black, I mean car face. And then underneath the plastron, it has that pretty cool pattern with, on the outer sides, you have those white dots. You can see his face, his mouth opening, trying to bite me, because, he thinks he can get me. I think your mouth is a little too big for even my pinky. But then he also has these yellow or white lines going from his eye to the back, which helps you see him as a musk turtle, not a mud turtle that has also come around here. So now let's go into their diet. So now musk turtles are very carnivorous as juveniles, but as they grow up and they get older, they become more of an omnivores. But throughout their entire lives, they'll eat plant matter because they are omnivores, but 
they really do like sm small invertebrates or medium sized invertebrates. This guy can't take anything down too big, so they'll go for crawfish, they'll go for freshwater mussels, some insect larvae, and they also might take down a fish, a small fish, of course, or a tadpole, and eat that. They also are very fond of carrion, which is dead meat found in the water. So that's their diet, and now let's get into their habitat. So musk turtles are highly, highly aquatic. They like areas with highly vegetated areas where there is a lot of water plants around, such as duckweed or other floating plants and some cattails and all that so that they can hide in, and also some aquatic plants. So they also really like muddy bottoms and or sandy bottoms that they can burrow into and hide. And they also will only really be found in slower moving bodies of water. They aren't the best swimmers, so they'll often walk across the bottom and a slower moving in a slow current will help them with that. So now let's get into the numbers that I have found. I've actually only found two baby common musk turtles across but <clears throat> sorry, but they are found across the entire state of New Jersey, and the places that I have found them are Sussex and Morris County because I was like right on the border in one of those forests and it was found there. But the best months to find them are between April and September. I found this little hatchling in er, in late August before school started. And yeah, so now let's get into a few interesting facts about common musk turtles. So now a few interesting facts about common musk turtles is actually that they're very poor swimmers. Not very poor, but not the best. So that's why you'll often find them in only slow moving bodies of water and not strong current. But they're actually pretty good climbers. So you'll, sorry. So you will often find them like two feet up a log and you're like, how did a turtle get up there? Who knows? But these guys, they are actually very good climbers. And now they're called, they're also known as stink pot turtles and musk turtles because when they are disturbed or when they feel in danger, they will often, they have a little sink land at the bottom underneath them. I can't show you because A, this guy is penny sized. And B, it's also very small. So this gland actually excretes a bad, a foul smelling odor, which will scare off many predators because they don't want to eat something that smells dead or something that smells terrible because who wants to smell that bad? Um, but another interesting fact is these guys are actually born penny size. So this guy is bigger than how I hatched him. Yeah. And because of that, they're incredibly hard to sell. Because to sell a turtle or a tortoise, they need to be four inches long. And these guys, they rarely get four inches. So they're actually very hard to sell. But Musk turtles are actually also very defensive. You can see the whole time he's had his mouth open to try to bite me. So, yeah, that's a few interesting facts about musk turtles. So now that was the first video of this series, Species Profile. And in this one, we talked about the common musk turtle. So if you like this video, please do hit the like button. Please do subscribe if you want to see more of this series and more videos of me going out harping and more pictures and videos of my pets. And you'll also find all those on my Instagram where I post a lot of pet pics and random herps that I find. And if you want to say anything, if you have any f other interesting facts about the common musk turtle or anything that you think I said wrong, check out and write it down in the comments section. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video. Oh, I really wish it would focus on him. All right, if you're still here, that's great. So I actually did move little Sterling here. Oh, now you can see him better. Anyhow, I did a few pictures like this for the video. If you guys stayed after the video, because you're the best viewers. Anyhow, after the end scene. So I did put some more plants. Most of the plants didn't work because it's very dry out of the water, but the pothos did great. But anyhow, so I did move Sterling into this 40 gallon, so he is hidden for half the time. And I'm gonna get some fish for this and I'll do an update video on this paladarium very soon, but now let me put Sterling back in his tank. All right, so I put him here, but he hasn't moved. So I'm just 
I will need to make sure he gets a breath of air before he goes down. So I'm just gonna lightly place him and then bring you guys down to here so you can see him. I'll drop him down. So he'll, he floats to the bottom and then he runs. So you see how I was saying that they don't actually really like to swim. He quickly just ran across the bottom into a place to hide. And even though that was very short, you might have also seen how long his neck was and his short little legs. Alright, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.